by special recording. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, and Wheaties, breakfast of champions, present The Lone Ranger. With a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Hail, Silver. Hooray! Diving Doris is 13, and she is a diving queen. She can do a flip because she knows she's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got gold power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. That's a mighty good idea for you. Just make sure you eat a big bowl of Cheerios and milk every breakfast, and you'll get gold power, too. Because a Cheerios breakfast is loaded with proteins, vitamins, and minerals. The very things that help build healthy bodies, strong bones, good red blood, and muscles. Why, they'd be the sort of breakfast you'd go for even if they didn't taste so good. And they do taste delicious. Cheerios are a real oat cereal, already cooked with that delicious toasted oat flavor. So that's for you. Swell-tasting Cheerios and milk for Go Power. Eat them every morning and you'll hear... <laughs> She's feeling her Cheerios. The Lone Ranger's Indian friend, Tato, dismounted in front of Sheriff Gordon's office in Crystal Creek. The elderly lawman was an ex-railroad detective whom the Lone Ranger and Tonto had met years before. As the Indian entered the office, Sheriff Gordon exclaimed, Tonto! I haven't seen you or your masked pal since he helped me capture that train robber in Dodge City. It's plenty good to see you again, Sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking for another crook now. Huh? A crook in town? Yeah, someone broke into Banker Powell's house last night. <laughs> The thief made off with a banker's gold watch and a wallet that held $20. The thief not get much loot. Yeah, but the stolen watch belonged to Pike's father. The banker's willing to reward anyone who finds it and returns it to him. Oh, uh, me got half a dozen reward notice from Wells Fargo. Uh, who's wanted? A fellow named Ozark Riley. Him steal money from Wells Fargo. Shoot guard. As quickly as possible, Toto told the sheriff all he knew about Ozark Riley. As the lawman studied the handbills, he muttered, Robbery six months old. How come we didn't get these handbills sooner? A stagecoach carrying mail from Odoc City and Crystal Creek, attacked by India. Uh, I don't know why they use stagecoaches to carry the mail. The railroads do a better job. Me give Marshal Frazier handbills in Modoc City. And then come here and give them to you. Thanks for bringing them to me, Tonto. Isn't that all right? Handbills list serial number, stolen money. Eh, yeah, I see. Do you have any reason to think Riley's in these parts? Lone Ranger find out. Him spend some time in Jackson City. Well, that's two days' travel from here. Is that right? Lone Ranger disguise himself as prospector. Go there, ask question about Crook. Me plan meet Lone Ranger near Painted Rock in half hour. Gee, according to this notice, Riley has a tattooed star on his right arm. Uh huh. A newcomer was in town a couple of days ago buying supplies at the general store. 
I saw a tattooed star on his right arm. Oh? Him in town now? No, he's staying at the shack north of here. It's about a three-hour ride from town. Oh, what him look like? Well, a heavy beard covers most of his face. Well, maybe him grow beard to hide face. Yeah. When I asked him his name, he said he was Ozark Jones. Him change last name. Yeah, I figured he was local when he said he was prospecting a creek near the shack. There's no gold anywhere near the place. Maybe him use shack for hideout. Well, come on, Tonto. We'll pass Painted Rock on the way to the shack. Lone Ranger, Weighted Rock. Yeah, we'll meet him. Then go call on Ozark Jones. Sheriff Gordon didn't know it, but at this same moment, the two men who robbed the banker in Crystal Creek were riding toward the shack occupied by Ozark Jones. The petty sneak thieves, named Knife Coleman and Skip McCook, were short of food and money. If we hadn't spent the $20 we stole, we'd have had cash enough to get breakfast before leaving Crystal Creek. What are you whining about? We got a meal and a night's lodging for the $20. It was a mighty slim meal. It was better than nothing. Maybe we should have tried to sell the banker's watch for money enough to buy supplies. That watch has Pike's name engraved on it. The sheriff would have jailed us fast if we tried to sell it. Knife... I'm through being a two-bit crook. Huh? <laughs> Hunger makes a fella do a lot of things, but I've never heard of it reforming anyone. I'm turning crook in a bigger way than ever. What do you mean? I've traveled on an empty stomach without cash or grub for the last time. From now on, when I rob a man, I'll get enough to make the risk worthwhile. <laughs> That's easier said than done. Well, I'll show you how easy it is. And I'll believe it when I see it. Hey, Skip, look. Shack ahead. Smoke's coming from the chimney. Someone must be fixing grub. Maybe they'll share it with us. Come on. Get up there. Get up there. Oh, Oh, there. The two men drew rein and dismounted outside Ozark's shack. Knife pounded on the door, but without waiting for it to open, he lifted the latch. Hey, anyone home? What's the idea of busting in here? Leave that gun on the table, mister. Why are you pulling a six-shooter on me? You gave me the idea when you reached for your hardware. You always meet callers with a gun? Strangers aren't welcome here. Now clear out. Guess again, mister. Ozark's my name. Ozark Jones. All right, Ozark. My partner and I are hungry. That's your tough luck. There's food cooking on the stove. What about it? We'll help you eat it. I don't need any help. Now get going. We're staying. Knife. Take his gun. You two have made a big mistake. No one's ever taken my gun and lived. Oh, Skip, he's going for his gun. Oh. Skip. Did he hit you? No, I got him first. Man, he was plenty fast on the draw. He wasn't fast enough. Yep. Dead, Skip. He'd have killed me if I hadn't gunned him. Yeah. Now we're in real trouble. I shot him in self-defense. Maybe you shouldn't have pulled your gun in the first place. He was reaching for his when we walked in here. We'll eat a quick meal, take some supplies, then look around to see if that bearded critter has any cash. The partners ate greedily. Then as Knight took supplies from a shelf, Skip noticed a chest in the corner of the room. After smashing the lock, he lifted the lid and gasped. Knife, it's full of cash. What? There's thousands of dollars here. Gosh, you're right. We're rich. Oh, oh. that makes up for the money we didn't get from the banker last oh, night. Fill your pockets, Knife. Right. But we can't carry. We'll put them to our saddlebags. Sure. Now we better clear out of here. Well, wait till I get the supplies. <laughs> from now on, we'll be able to buy what we need. Well, don't you want to take grub? All I want is to clear out before someone comes along and finds it. All right, I'm with you. Well, let's go. Meanwhile, Tonto and Sheriff Gordon met the Lone Ranger at Painted Rock on the outskirts of Crystal Creek. The masked man, no longer in the prospector's disguise he had worn in Jackson City, greeted the lawman warmly. Then he told what he had learned about Ozark Riley. Riley was in Jackson City a few weeks ago. He'd grown a beard, but several people remembered seeing a tattooed star on his right arm. That's the fellow I told Tonto about, mister. Do you know him, Sheriff? Yep. He calls himself Ozark Jones. 
He's living in the shack about two and a half hours north of here. We go there, get him? Yes. Come on, Phil. Come on, come. Get up there. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Sailor Sam is the smartest boy who ever shouted, ship ahoy! He can weather any storm that blows. He's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Good old Cheerios. They got gold. So nourishing because they're made from oats with minerals, vitamins, and proteins that your body needs. Yes, indeed. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day off right. Does all sorts of good things for your body. Helps you have strong bones and muscles, good red blood, and healthy nerves. So every morning, take on a bowl of Cheerios and milk for real go power. You like that wonderful toasted oat flavor, too. Downright delicious. Come to think of it, Cheerios is one of the tastiest muscle-building foods you can eat. Try Cheerios and you'll hear... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. When the Lone Ranger, Toto, and Sheriff Gordon reached Ozark Shack, the lawman entered without knocking. As he stepped inside, followed by the Lone Ranger and Toto, Gordon exclaimed, Who's Ah, uh, it looked like him dead. Well, I'll soon find out whether he is or not. What about it, Sheriff? Yes, he's dead, all right. He cheated the hangman. You see the tattoo on his right arm? Oh, there's no doubt about his identity. Ah, uh, him Ozark Riley. Maybe we'll find the Wells Fargo money here. The man who killed him probably took that money. What, uh, what makes you think so? The smashed lock on his empty chest. You might be right. On the other hand, it might be hidden somewhere in this shack. Well, if you're going to look for it, I'll go outside and look for the killer's track. Good enough, mister. Hey, uh, give me a hand with the search, will you, Tono? Uh, let me help you look for money. A few moments later, the masked man re-entered the shack. Sheriff, I found the tracks of two riders outside. Where'd they go when they left here? The tracks headed west. We'll follow them. I'll go after them if you'd rather stay here to look for the money. I'd like to find that cash. Very well, I'll follow those tracks. Uh, me follow your trail. Join you later, Kim. All right, Tato. Adios. Well, see you later, mister. Easy, steady, big fella. One silver! After they left Ozark Shack, the two killers headed for Modoc City. Because of their painstaking efforts to cover their tracks, they reached the thriving settlement later than they expected. As they rode along Main Street, Skip looked at the watch they had stolen from Banker Pike. It's seven o'clock, Nave. It was long enough to get here. It pays to be killed. Why you had to go to all the trouble of dragging brush over our tracks is more than I can figure out. I did it to cover our trail. That trick won't fool a good tracker. Now that we're this far, we've nothing to worry about. No one will be able to find us in a town this size. I've heard a lot about Modoc City. Yeah, so have I. Knife. Look. What's wrong? Well, there's the Henry House Hotel. Well, what about it? And next to Fred Harvey's outfit, that's the most famous eating place in the West. Oh, yeah? A woman named Ma Hanks runs here. Well, let's stop and get a meal there. Uh, now that we can afford the best, we'll do more than that. We'll rent a couple of rooms and stay there a few days. It suits me if the law doesn't get wise to us. We didn't leave a thing at that shack to tie us into Ozark's killing, so forget the law. But if we're caught, we'll hang. They'll have to prove we killed Ozark first. Draw rain here at the hitch trail. Oh, boy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. We'll take our saddlebags inside, rent our rooms, get cleaned up. <laughs> and have some of the finest food we've ever tasted. It was dusk when the Lone Ranger reached Modoc City. To hide his mask, he pulled his Stetson low over his eyes and guided Silver along back alleys. 
He drew rein at the rear door of the jail. Oh, easy, steady, big fella. A few moments later, he was inside the office talking to Marshal Jim Fraser. He explained how he had followed the two men who shot Ozark Riley as far as the city limits. It was impossible to follow the trail along Main Street, Marshal Jim. Yeah, it'd take a bloodhound to do that, mister. They weren't far ahead of me. That means they haven't been in town long. That's right. In that case, we'll start looking around for a couple of newcomers. Meanwhile, in Ma Hank's dining room, Knife and Skip finished their meal. As Skip drained his third cup of coffee, Knife looked around the deserted room. Uh, we're the last ones to finish eating, Skip. Uh, we were late starting, Knife. Man, that was a doggone good meal. Best I ever ate. Who do we pay for it? Well, here comes a youngster who served us. You just want more coffee? No, no, no thanks. How much do we owe you? Here's the check. Oh, just a minute. And here's our case. Gosh, $100 bill. That's right, youngster. Don't you have anything smaller? Nope. Well, I'll have to ask more Hank to change it. I'll be right back. We'll wait right here. Hey, Ma. What is it, Ned? Those gents in the dining room handed me a $100 bill to pay their check. So they're paying in paper money. I told them I'd have to ask you to change it. Paper money, huh? Ned, you go to the lobby and get the handbill Marshal Jim gave me this morning. Yes. I want to compare the serial number on this bill with the Wells Fargo list. When Ned returned with the handbill, Ma Hank studied it closely. <sighs> Ma, those gents are still sitting in the dining room waiting for change. Let them wait, Ned. I got orders from Marshal Jim to be mighty careful about... But they might come in here and find out what's taking so long. Thunderation. Huh? Ned, Ned, here's the serial number of this bill. You mean it's on the handbill? Yeah. I'll get my six-shooter out of the drawer and ask those gents some questions. Six-shooter? That's right, Ned. This here is stolen money. Knife and Skip had seen Ned pass the dining room on his way to the lobby to get the handbill. They saw it in his hand as he returned to the kitchen. Knife's eyes narrowed suspiciously. He was carrying the handbill, Skip. Yeah, I saw it. What do you make of that? I don't know. But I aim to find out. <laughs> Come on, we're going into that kitchen. Right. As they went through the swinging door to the kitchen, Ma turned from the drawer with her gun concealed beneath the folds of her apron. Wide-eyed with dismay, Ned, Ma's helper, exclaimed... Hey, what's the idea of busting in here? You're not allowed in Ma's kitchen. Take it easy, youngster. Are you the gents who handed Ned that hundred-dollar bill? That's right. We got tired of waiting for the chain. Well, you've got some explaining to do, mister. What do you mean? That stolen cash. Stolen? You heard me. How'd you know he stole it? Grab her, Skip. She has a gun. Give me that six-shooter, lady. Let go, you ugly galoo. Help! Help! Shut up, youngsters. Help! Put her hand over his mouth. Robert, please. Help! Help! Shut up, or I'll fire you with a gun barrel. Let go of me, you poison face rattler. As Skip struggled to take Ma's gun, Knife held Ned in a grip of steel with one hand, clamped tightly over the boy's mouth. Hey, what the... Suddenly, he was startled when a bullet struck the floor inches from his feet. The shot had been fired by the gun Ma still held. Skip, get that gun! He's strong as an ox! I could get my hand free of... I break your face with this gun barrel! Knife, give me a hand! What's the gun blade? Oh, hey. Knife, it's a marshal. And the mask, man. You're covered. Surprised at the unexpected appearance of the Lone Ranger and Marshal Jim, Ma Hank released her hold on the gun. Skip snatched it from her, but before he could fire, the Lone Ranger's bullet smashed the weapon. Oh, my hand, my hand. I'll get you. Meanwhile, Knife tried to pull Ned aside to reach for his holster. No. But before his gun cleared leather, a silver bullet brushed his knuckles. Get your hands up unless you want more of the same treatment. They're up. Don't shoot again, I quit. I'll take their guns while you keep them covered, mister. Very well, Marshal Jim. Oh, sakes alive, where did you two come from? We've been going through town looking for two critters the masked man's been following. Just as we were coming here to ask you about him, we heard gunplay. Knew you were in trouble, Ma, so we came on the run. The trouble started when I recognized that paper money you told me about, Marshal Jim. These polecats tried to pay for a meal with some of the Wells Fargo cash. You'd better search them, Marshal Jim. Yeah. I've got their guns, mister. Let's see how much paper money they're carrying. They had a couple saddlebags with them when they checked into the hotel. 
Maybe there's more to cash in their room. Ned, we'll search their rooms, too. All right, stand still. I'll see you. Keep your hands up. Yeah, they're up, but what's the Who are you? Uh, Skip McCook's my name. The law doesn't have anything on me. Your pockets are full of brand new paper money. And here's a fine-looking gold watch. Hey, give me that watch. The name engraved on the watch is Pike. You said your name's McCook. Sheriff Gordon's looking for a gold watch stolen from Banker Pike in Crystal Creek. Oh, Skip, they've got us for everything. Shut up. I'll check the serial numbers of that cash against the list. Good idea, Mrs. Hank. You two are in plenty of trouble. Yeah, how'd the law get the serial numbers of that money? The serial numbers have been on record for six months. What? Six months? But we just got that cash. You didn't know it could be traced when you murdered and robbed those Ark Riley. You can't prove we murdered him. The serial numbers on those bills will be proof enough. No, oh, who'd ever think Ozark was a thief? <laughs> Look who's talking. Well, what about the money, Mrs. Hank? Mister, every one of the serial numbers checked with the list left on the handbill. But there's still a lot of numbers unaccounted for. The rest of the money may be in their saddlebags. We'll take these two to jail and search their rooms. Half an hour later, Sheriff Gordon entered Marshal Jim's office. As he approached the lawman's desk, he saw Banker Pike's gold watch gleaming on the blotter. He pocketed the timepiece to return it to its rightful owner. Then eyed the neat stacks of new paper currency the Marshal counted. Is that the Wells Fargo money, Marshal Fraser? That's right, Gordon. <laughs> Tonto and I met the Lone Ranger on our way into town a few minutes ago. He said he'd ride back to pick up Tonto. I hear you got the fellows who murdered Ozark Riley. Yeah, they're behind bars right now. Well, I reckon you've earned the reward. No, no. It'll go to Ma Hank. Huh? She spotted the stolen money. Well, good for her. <laughs> yeah, but Ma's not half as pleased about that as she is about seeing the Lone Ranger. We'll return in just a moment for a word about our next exciting Lone Ranger adventure, Rendezvous at the Little Bighorn. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Don't ever doubt it. Champions are made, not born. You can get there. For example, take the story of Wheaties champion Stan Musial of the St. Louis Cardinals. Young Stan was willed no claim to fame, no magic way to learn the game. He had to sweat and give his all, learning to field and hit that ball. Sure, Wheaties was his breakfast call. Today they call him Stan the Man, still and always a Wheaties fan. Stan Musial has been powering up with Wheaties right along, 19 years. Good for Stan, good for you. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Now watch Stan belt that ball. Hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way, he's on his way, on his way, get on your way, with Wheaties, cause champions are made, not born, yes sir, get on your way, get on your way, get on your way with Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Acting as scouts for Lieutenant Colonel Custer, the Lone Ranger and Tonto located the camp of Chief Sitting Bull. In the moonlit darkness, they saw an army of warriors in the village ahead. Five thousand men in there, Kimasabi. Custer has only two hundred men. Come on, Tonto. We'll warn him to avoid a fight until he's heavily reinforced. But before the Lone Ranger and Tonto could return to their horses, six Indian sentries discovered them. And there he goes. the warriors grabbed the masked man while a third club Tonto. We kill spies! Death and disaster are ahead of the Lone Ranger and Tonto in our next exciting adventure. Be sure to listen. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle. Produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.